everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to obtain a yes-no answer with the Oracle cards. I do have a Tarot deck out here, but that's going to most likely be in another video. First of all, you see how I have my table set up. I have my crystals. I have a pendulum. I have my candle lit for protection and clearing, and um, I'm all ready to go except for one thing. I always take off a watch or if I'm wearing a lot of rings, I take them off before I do a reading because my electromagnetic field is very sensitive to metal, so I just prefer to take most of the metal off. Now, if I'm wearing a simple necklace or simple earrings, that's fine to leave on. But I'm just gonna put my watch over here, and that's just for me. It may not affect you at all. So let's take a look at the Enchanted deck. And someone has asked a question, there's no need to know what the question is right now. We're just going to be doing a demonstration. Here I am trying to shuffle this fairly new deck of mine. So it's not wanting to shuffle real well. People have a lot of different ways they like to shuffle. I'm just clearing the deck right now. It's very important to clear the deck. Okay, it's clear enough. All right, now, another thing you can do to do instant clearing on your deck, and I know this sounds um, a little gypsy-like, but you can just knock them three times, and that just instantly clears your deck. Remember, you have already infused your cards with your intention for blessings for the highest and best good of all, and to be a reader from the light. That's very important to do, and you most likely should have done that when you first got your deck. Okay, so let's say that my client has already shuffled and put the cards out for me to put back together, so I go left to right, put them one on top of the other, and there are two ways to do this, so I'm going to demonstrate both. But one very important thing that you're going to need to realize is don't flip the cards like this. What you're going to want to do to keep the integrity of how your client shuffled is flip them sideways. So we're looking for a yes-no answer. And there's that Ori Desert again. It seems to come up up a lot for me and that's really interesting because I just moved from the desert and I am a little homesick for it so we're looking for a yes no answer and you always use an odd number of cards so that you don't get a draw now in this instance we have two cards that are upright and they just came that way and one that is reversed so, two yeses with the upright outweigh the one no, and so the answer would be a yes. All right, now let's do this again. And at this point, you, you could read into the meanings of the card to get much more information on perhaps why a particular answer came up. Um, it, it really is part of what you do as an intuitive to give as much information to the client as possible. So let's do this again. And we're going to put out five cards this time. And let's say the client has put the cards down in front of me and I don't turn them around. And some people do that unconsciously without even realizing it. You pick them up exactly the way your client places them in front of you. And here we go again with the cut. This is how I do it. Other people do it other ways. And again, I'm going to just deal from the top and flip them sideways. So we've got moonlight. We've got stuck in the mud. We've got magic stream. And we've got, looks like a yes already, we've got Gentle Gardener. Okay, so again, 
we have four cards that are upright. That is a definite yes. And then we have one reversed. And so the yes outweigh the no. Okay. But let's say they had come up like this. Let's say the cards came up with three reversed. One, two, three, and two upright. Then the answer would be a no. Now, when I let a client you know, I reveal to them it's a no, I do it gently. Because let's say they were really wanting a yes. It's a question that means so much to them. And you can just see their face fall. And so, you know, you always, you know, have a lot of responsibility as an intuitive counselor to let people know, okay, it does say no for right now. It's just for right now. So then you might want to go into the meanings of the cards and let them know a little bit more of why a no came up for the particular question that they've asked. And just reassure them that perhaps there are other alternative actions they can take to maybe turn it around to a yes at some point in time. So we're actually just learning the tip of the iceberg here as far as obtaining yes-no answers. Now, perhaps, on the other side of the coin, they really needed a no answer. Like, am I going to be let go soon? And so they were hoping for a no. Um, naturally, if you get a yes on something like that, then you're really going to have to go into your intuitive self. You're going to have to go into your psychic self and tune in, and you're going to want to verify the answer to a very important question like that. Because remember, you're dealing with human beings, people who have feelings and their whole lives, you know, uh, could be resting on an answer like this. And if you say, yep, you're going to be fired, you know, you can't just let them get up and leave like that. So another way is to use a pendulum. And this is how I have two pendulums. This is my bigger, heavier one. Clockwise is yes. I've already pre-programmed my pendulum for yes, no's. Counterclockwise is a no. Okay? So clockwise is yes. Counterclockwise is no. And let's just say it wants to swing and go this way and that way. Well, if you've been working with your pendulum, it knows what to do, but hopefully you're not going to subconsciously, you know, move your hand and put answers into it so that you don't get accurate answers, but it's an excellent way to back up the answer that you got with the cards along with your own intuitive insight. So let's say they've asked the same question again. Am I going to be let go from my job soon? And let's just see. Okay. It's kind of a wobbly yes, but it's still a yes. So once again, this is where you start talking with them and saying, what makes you think this is going to happen? Did you get a bad review? Or um, what do you think you might be able to do to keep that from happening? Do you need to go sit down and talk with your boss? Um, another thing you might mention to them is it might be a great idea to get your resume together and already start looking for another position just in case. And I really believe in my heart of hearts that major job changes and shifts like this happen for a reason, even though they're catastrophic at the time. And sometimes the loss of one job is a stepping stone to another excellent job far beyond your hopes and dreams. And this also gets into how we manifest new things in our lives, which isn't going to be this video. But as you can see, you know, there's a lot of responsibility, once again, how you deal with your client or querent, as I like to call it and to get yes, no answers with five cards. So that's going to be it for this particular video. And we're going to be using 
these very same cards and probably the Osho Zen to do a simple five card spread. Thank you everyone and see you next time.